All right, that was a 2019 Rewind performance from Micah Shemaya and the Dreadites Band. Former goalkeeper for the Reggae Girls, Nicole McClure, kick-started her football academy recently, and she's looking forward to its success in the near future. She joins us now with more details. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Nice and sunny here in New York. So uh, What? <laughs> <laughs> Great to hear that. Um, so, so many, many Jamaicans, Nicole, would have been more familiar with you starting with the World Cup. But prior to that, I don't know how many people know that you actually have a have a history in coaching. Tell us a little bit about that. Tell us about that history. Yeah, normally uh, during the off season and even during season uh, playing overseas, I coach um, youth players ages five all the way up to maybe sixteen. Mm -hmm. since 2013 so i'm very familiar with with kids and, and and football yeah you've also i mean between the world cup experience playing in europe um growing up in 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 the states how has that kind of shaped your outlook on football has it given you kind of broader sense of the game yes definitely i mean in all the countries that i've played in you know there's different kinds of style um, the different cultures um, are implemented in the style of play as well. Um, for example, you know, in France, they like to play very technical, similar to, to how Jamaicans play, mm -hmm. a lot of fancy and, you know, salad and stuff like that. Whereas yeah. in Sweden, a little bit more direct. Um, so, yeah, in implementing different kinds of cultural styles in the game it has given me a broader sense of, of, of football. Awesome. Um, tell me about your World Cup experience. I know it's been a little while. But, 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 but how was that for you? I mean, it's the ultimate world stage for, for any footballer. How was that for you? It was an incredible experience. I mean, the amount of support that we have, that we've had in, throughout the entire world, the diaspora has been incredible. Um, I mean, just meeting, you know, random fans who don't even speak a lick of English, you know, and telling us that, you know, they're inspired by us and, and how much they support us was just amazing to me. Yeah. I mean, I'll never take it for granted. Amazing. And then what you're doing now is you're starting your football academy. Give me the vision <laughs> behind this. Well, my, my goal is to have my own goalkeeper academy eventually. But right now I'm just starting, you know, just working with youths, getting them involved in the, from the community. Um, many kids in my area are not really familiar with football because mm -hmm. basketball and, 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 and American football kind of, you know, rule this area. Um, I'm just, you know, just getting them involved. Right now it's in its infancy. I have two kids that I work with weekly, um, ages 13 and 14. We just do one hour of skills, um, you know, different um, technical drills, and at the end we play one, one against one or two against one. Mm -hmm. How important is it, do you believe? Because one of the things I read is um, you're saying where you grew up, to be able to do football, you, 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 know, you had to travel up quite a bit of a distance to access that kind of training. Is that one of the reasons why you thought, no, nah, I'm going to make this, this accessible to kids in my area? Yes, absolutely. I mean, growing up, I grew up in South Jamaica, Queens, um, in New York, where, like I said, the concrete jungles, so everybody plays football. I mean, sorry, American football <laughs> or even our basketball, really. And my mother had to, try, had to drive me all the way out east to Long Island, where it's open land and grass and nice and what have you. So I thought maybe why not bring football back here? You know, let's get our people, our community uh, members involved in, in this beautiful game. I mean, it's the, the most popular uh, sport in the world. Mm -hmm. So why not get, get us involved? You know, we shouldn't have to go all the way over to a different zip code when we can just play right here. Yeah. How important is it for a, a football career to start at this level? that the formative years, um, you know the technical things, you, you get the, 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 the technique that's right, that the Football Academy really is an important stepping stone to a long-term career. Yeah, I mean, at this stage, at, at the youngest age, you know, maybe four or five, you're still learning your motor skills. So if you're, if you're, um, if you're coordinated with your feet, you're gone clear, you know? <laughs> so if, if, as opposed to, you know, maybe basketball, it's a little bit easier to work with your hands. Um, so it's very important to, to, you know, hone in those skills from an early age and then, you know, nurture them. And then as you grow, you get more interest and you're better and you can, you know, expand your game and possibly play in the World Cup. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you're a goalkeeper, so I, I'm sure most people think the academy is primarily for that. I know that's probably where you're heading, but what do you do now? Who is it open to? Just girls? It's open to, it's open to everyone, girls and boys. I work with a girl and a boy, uh, brother and sister duo um, on weekends. Um, I also work with um, with three other academies, kind of learning their the business side as well, and I coach um, for them as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I work with all all levels. Um, as a matter of fact, this afternoon I'll be working with the three year olds, <laughs> boys <laughs> and girls. So it's you know it's fair. Football is for everyone. It's for everyone. All right. So for persons, can listen, Jamaica people can go and call them people now. So tell us the people who are watching, and um and they want to have their their children become a part of the academy how do they reach you and how do they do so um they can email me at nicole.mcclure03 at gmail.com or give me a phone call or a text uh 917-476-6449 or follow me on instagram nickel165 i'm i'm available i even travel to you you know to the nearest field if, if it's more convenient for you as well, as well wonderful wonderful awesome to see you nicole and congrats on this it's very important that the young people get the right foundation. And I'm glad that you're a part of that process. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nicole McClure, youth soccer coach and World Cup veteran. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Up next, Neville and I, yeah, try to answer a few questions in our Olympic trivia. The last time, I didn't do so good. But before that, how much do you know about women's football? Take a look at this feature. <laughs> Women's football has grown in popularity year on year. From the Women's Super League becoming a fully professional competition in 2018 to the record-breaking viewing figures from the 2019 Women's World Cup, which surpassed 1 billion viewers. Let's find out a bit more about women's football. Women's football was banned in 1921. On the 5th of December 1921, the Football Association banned women from playing the sport on FA-associated pitches. This meant that women could no longer play at real grounds with spectators or referee. The FA made a statement branding the game as, open quotes, quite unsuitable for females, end quote, and something that, open quote, ought not to be encouraged, end quote. The ban was finally lifted in 1971, following the formation of the Women's Football Association, WFA, a couple years earlier. Women players work and play. A lot of female players commit to their football dreams whilst also maintaining a family and career. Women's Totem player, Jenna Skilachi, works the 9 to 5 as well as being fully committed to her sport. She trains three nights a week, works five days a week, and then plays on a Sunday. Women footballers earn a lot less money. Although the number of high-earning female players are rising, the gender pay gap is severely unequal when it comes to football. With a top bracket of around £70,000 a year, compared to Wayne Rooney's £300,000 a week. Despite the huge gender pay gap, the women make it work. Jamaica's women's team makes history. The Reggae Girls are Jamaica's national women's team and they are the first Caribbean squad to ever compete at the World Cup in 2019. They did this by proving their skills on the pitch but also got some assistance from Sidella Marley, Bob Marley's daughter, who helped revive the team. The greatest female player of all time. Brazil's Marta Vieira da Silva was given the nickname Pele in Skirts by Pele himself. She is often regarded as the greatest female player of all time. She has been named FIFA World Player of the Year six times five times in a row between 2006 and 2010, and also in 2018. This is not only a record for female players, but for men too. The 35-year-old doesn't appear to have any plans of slowing down anytime soon. There you have it, 
A few things you should know about women's football.